So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. Welcome today to More Than Conquerors. We're so glad you have joined us. And, uh, you know, it's just always such a joy to be with you, share with you these wonderful, eternal, never failing truths from the Word of God. And just a reminder that, you know, the Word works. Yes, it does. <laughs> it Thank God. works per person. Uh, you know, we're not just in a, a, a club here uh, where everybody is the same cookie cutter mentality and and uh, lifestyle and persona, but it really works per person. And God will work with you personally to help the Word of God produce in your own life. And that's why it's so important for us to pay attention, not just as group think, but, uh, you know, really each one of us receiving from the Lord what we need to. It's still, Terry, the great words in the Bible, of whosoever will can have whatsoever, mm. you know, whenever. <laughs> and it's just an all-inclusive thing. The The greatest marketing point to me outside of the, uh, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ as he's our Savior and our Redeemer is that God works with you per person. It's an autonomous dynamic between you and the Lord. And you work out, like Paul said, you work out your own salvation based on the precepts of this word and the Holy Spirit living in you to individually help you accomplish that by the power of God. So we're going to talk about these wonderful things today. You know, Terry has 54 years of um, third world missionary evangelism <laughs> in his life uh, to speak from that platform of information and experience. And it's just so wonderful, darling, to think about all of that. Um, you know, you have had to go around the world and preach uh, doctrine uh, to help ministers and leaders in local churches and all these different countries with all these different traditions and and, sure. you know, person, all their different nationalities and stuff. Gods. Yeah, all of their all of their gods and religion. But what's been so exciting is that in doing so, you've been able to go in and share with them um, things like, you know, the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost oh, fell, yeah. when the Holy Spirit was poured out Thank God. Uh, <laughs> there in Acts chapter two. Sure. And just recently, we were in a church out in California where you really honed in on that and talked about that and the difference between walking out of the, the Old Testament, what Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection did, that shift into the New Testament. Why don't you share with us some of that wonderful stuff? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just listening to you and thinking, thank God this works. Yeah. You know, praise God. <laughs> yeah, that, it works. That, that we literally can take the Word of God. Right. What, what an awesome God to think yeah. that He would give us a Word right. that we could use 24 hours a day, wherever we are on the day. planet. Exactly. You know, when Jesus said to the disciples, uh, it really messed them up uh, in their <laughs> thinking because He said, hey, I'm going to leave. Right. But when I do, the Holy Spirit's going to come. Yes. And he said, now, it's better for you that I go away. Right. Well, you know, in their minds, that they're just, thinking, how, how in the that world is it sense? possibly yeah. good for me if you leave? If, if you leave. Yeah. <laughs> you've been providing for us for three and a half years. Three and a half you, years. You, you've, you've provided our, our money, our health. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you, you Night and day. everything we do is wrapped around you. Yes. And we get, gave up everything to follow you, and now you're leaving? How, how could that possibly be better? Right. But but the thing, the reason it was better is because Jesus was a was operating as a as a as a man on planet Earth as a human right. as a as a prophet uh, on, on the planet Earth, and, and so as a human he could only be in one place at one time. We are here in the year 
2022, the year of our Lord, 2022, to do great and mighty things for the kingdom of God, to focus on helping children around the world. Last year, we did 42 nations in 20, 20, 42 different orphanages in 26 different nations. And we are just delighted to do that all the time. Besides all year long, we're helping widows and, and homes of people that are in need around the world. You can give through Terry Mize Ministries through terrymize.com. We just look forward to hearing from you. It's going to be a great time. We're going to do great things and we're going to do it together. God bless you. We pray all of God's abundant blessings on you coming in and going out. Bye-bye. I mean, if he was in Galilee, yeah. he couldn't be in Jerusalem. If he was in Jerusalem, he couldn't be in Capernaum. If he was in Capernaum, he couldn't be in Tiberias. He, you know, he just could be one. But when the when he left, and the Holy Spirit came on right. the day of Pentecost, then the Holy Spirit is omnipresent because he's not operating as a human. He's right. he's, he's the Spirit, and so uh, and they so if see I, that. So if I'm in yeah. you know Texas and say, "Oh Lord, help," and somebody else is in Ukraine and somebody else is in in China and someone right. else is in Africa somewhere, uh, he can be with everybody at the same time. And so we can make the well, word work. To to me, thank God, thank to God. To me, like you said, the greatest things the the salvation. Uh, you and I have said so many times over the years that salvation uh, was certainly the greatest thing God did. But after exactly. that, the best idea God had was the church. Thank God the for church. the church <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, to get us in church and get us where we can learn some things. But uh, it was such a relief to me as a as a teenager yeah. to realize what we just finished saying, that that um, I was used to, you know, back in the 50s, there were the great healing revivals. Right. And you had Oral Roberts and T.L. Osborne and A.A. Allen and Jack Coe and 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 and, and F. F. Bosworth. What these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful healing men of God. ministries had a big tremendous tent healing meetings, ministries, big miracle. And uh, and so we were used to that because I was born in 50, so I grew up right. in that, and then on into the 60s, and when I was a teenager in the 60s, uh, and. And it was such a relief to me one time in, in my, my 16th year there in the 60s. I remember realizing that, you know what, um, if you're if you're sick or you need help from God, and it's three o'clock in the morning. Right. <laughs> and, and the healing of Angela's didn't hear. Right. You know, Catherine Coombe was not in town. Joel exactly. Roberts is not in town. Taylor Laws were not in town. Uh, or if they are in town, you don't know how to get a hold of them. You don't have right. a phone number. Or you'd have to call and wake your pastor up. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> I mean, you can't. But you could get a hold of God. Yes. 24 7, you could say help. You could talk help. to Jesus. You could talk to God. And so that, that, that what you were just saying, that God, it works for per person. Per person. To me, that's the that's, greatest it is, blessing. It's a, I'm not dependent it's on God working. greatest marketable point. God working for me is not dependent on what somebody, on else, somebody is else is doing. It's that's dependent right. on what I'm saying and what I'm doing. What I can, yeah, exactly. You know, I've been preaching a lot lately this last year on, on heaven is watching and waiting. Yes. Uh, watching you and waiting on you to listen to what you're going to say, yeah. to see what you're what going you to gonna do. What are you going to say about it? So then they know what they're supposed to do so right. they can help you. Uh, yeah. So if you talk in line with the Word of God <laughs> and you act in That's line right. with the Word of God, That's right. then they can move for you. Exactly. If you're just out here, you know, whistling Dixie and just saying, well, I sure hope God shows up or I sure hope this happens or, or this right. sure would be nice, that heaven can't do anything for you because they're, right. they're, they're locked into the Word of God. Right. And so uh, it's per person. And so um, all through the Old Testament, to answer your question, um, <laughs> or, or try to answer it, um, um, in the Old Testament, uh, God didn't live in us. Right. The, if you'll go through the Old Testament, you'll see the great miracles that different people did. Uh, the Bible says that the Spirit of God came up on Samson, Some, right. and he killed a thousand like men Samson, with the jawbone yeah. of a donkey. Right. And then the Spirit of God lifted. Right. The Spirit of God came up on Elijah, and he outran the king's chariots. And then the Spirit of God lifted. Uh, but the Spirit of God didn't live in you. Right. It would come on and do a job right. and leave. Yeah. Because you couldn't handle him living in you if you weren't born again, right. and nobody was. If you didn't have a recreated human spirit, then you couldn't handle, handle that, that power, that, kind of that power. anointing. And so all through the Old, Old Testament, wow. you see phrases like this. It says, the Spirit of the Lord followed behind. Right. Or the Spirit of the Lord hovered above. Right. Or the Spirit of the Lord led them. Right. It never says exactly. he's in them. 
Y'all listen. You know, he's either he's either he's either above them or in front of them or behind them or working right. with them right. or come on them and leave. Right. But in the New Testament, it Hallelujah. says the Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in now he lives wow. in us. Yeah. And uh, somebody asked me just recently. They said they said, uh, brother Terry. They said if uh, thank you, Lord. If uh, if we discovered if some explorer discovered the uh, the Ark of the Covenant. He said, where is the Ark of the Covenant? Do we know? I said, well, I don't, I said, I don't know. Indiana Jones found it. Surely, surely we can find it, you know. But uh, that's a joke, for, you know. But uh, I said, you know, there's there's all kind of rumors. Right. A lot of people think that, that the Queen of Sheba, that Solomon gave it to the Queen of Sheba when she came to visit him and they had an affair and all that. And then she took it back with her and and hid it and it's never been found. Other people have other ideas. No, who, who knows? I told the Lord many years ago, I said, you know, if I was you, I would— uh, I would show Brother Hagen or Oral Roberts mm-hmm. where the Ark of the Covenant is. I said, I think that would be cool. And then if you just show it to Oral, he could take it down to ORU <laughs> and put it in the lobby of the prayer tower. And then uh-huh. Christians could come from all over the world right, right. And, and see it. Right. And, and there'd be the Ark. There'd be the, there'd be the Ten Commandments. There'd be yeah. the, the showbread. There'd be Aaron's rod that budded. It'd just be so great. But see, God's not interested no. in being spectacular and sensational. He's That's interested right. in being miraculous. And he wants Big you to, difference. the Bible says that he He wants you to be a believer that he is. Not because you can see it, but a believer that he is. And then he's the rewarder of those that, those diligently, that diligently seek, seek him. him. And so yeah. so he's not interested in, in giving you some proof tangibly because right. he wants you to believe by faith. But anyway, somebody asked me the other day, they said, but Brother Terry said, if someone was exploring and they discovered the Ark of the Covenant, he said, uh, if you touched it, would it kill you? He said, it always kill people. I said, well, it didn't always kill people. It killed one guy in the Bible, a guy named Uzzah. And I said, and Uzzah didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I mean, he did something wrong and it cost him his life, but he didn't mean to do anything wrong. He was just a soldier and they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant from one place to another. And, and these guys were carrying it on their shoulder like this. It's on a little platform. And four guys are carrying it on on, on the shoulder like this. And the ark's sitting there on the platform. And, and God told them, said, don't touch it. If you touch it, you'll die. Well, God didn't mean, I hate you. Right. If you touch my ark, I'll kill you. Right. No, he just meant that power is so strong in the ark of the covenant. That's right. Holy Ghost power. And you can't handle it because you're not born again. You're not saved. You, you don't have a recreated human spirit. This Old Testament. He said, so if you touch it, it'll kill you. And so they were carrying it along, and the guys that were carrying it stumbled. One of them stumbled. And when he stumbled, they, 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 you know, the ark began to fall. Right. And when it started to fall, Uzzah just automatically, I mean, just, just probably instinct, without thinking, yeah, just instinct, just, yeah. reached up to steady it. Right. And, and it killed him. Right. He touched it. And so, so he didn't touch it on purpose. He didn't touch it because he was trying to do something wrong, uh, but it killed him. And so they said, would it, would it, so I said, so it just killed the one guy, you know, it didn't kill everybody, <laughs> you know, but uh, he said, what would it kill us? I said, no, I said, because we're born again. We're, we're in the New Testament. We're, we're, we're born again. Now, Jesus has gone. The Holy Spirit has come right. on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter two, you referred to, then the Holy Spirit came to indwell us, to live in us for the Hallelujah. first time ever. All through right. the Old Testament, he came He came behind us and in front of us and over us and, and worked with us and, and came on us and left. But but now, for the first time ever, in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, then he came to live in us. Hallelujah. And now we have that same Ark yes, of the Covenant yes. power in us. That's that, amazing. Yeah. It's and amazing. so if, if, if it was sitting here today and we touched it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't kill us. Yeah. And the beauty of that, you know, in the Old Testament, uh, you know, God, you had like you were talking about, you had to go to a location mm-hmm. to find the right. power of God, right. the presence of God under the new covenant. And and which is why we emphasize so much the word of faith out of Romans chapter 10, yes. where Paul says in this particular chapter here, he says in verse eight. But what does it say? The word of faith is near you, near even you. in your heart and in your mouth. So God's the word of faith, which yeah, we preach, that we preach 
So it's the New Testament. The glorious concept of all of that is that we are the carriers. Yes. We are literally, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy <laughs> is Ghost. Is the temple of We're the, the Holy Ark. Ghost. We're the <laughs> Ark in the New Testament. And we carry that power and it's per person. So it's up to you how you how you develop that power, mm-hmm. how you grow in that power, how you ac- activate the measure of faith. The, the attention you give to watching over the word yes. in your own heart. Yes. You know, those seeds like the sower sows the word there in yes, Mark yes, chapter yes, four. Yes. If you don't pay attention to it, then you don't have that much show it to show for right. it. And it, it's a, like you said, it's up to you. It's up to you. How, it's up how to me. shallow or deep you want to go. Exactly. I've deep people, will call unto deep. I've told people for decades and decades, hey, you don't have to listen to me. Yeah. You can serve God any way you want to. That's right. I mean, any way you, you want to. You can have as little or as much. If you, if you want to go to church one time a year, if you don't want to go to church at all, if you if you want to pay your tithes, you don't want to pay your tithes, if you want to give offerings, you don't want to give your offering. If you want to live right, not live right, you can just serve God any way you want to. The 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 difference is, That's right. <laughs> if you do what we're telling you here, you do what the Bible says, yeah, the there benefits. are benefits. The benefits. So do you want the benefits? <laughs> you don't have to have the benefits. It's yeah. up to you. And so you can have That's 10 right. people here serving God on 10 levels. Exactly. But as Renee said, it's per person. So this person here just doesn't care what God says. But they say, Lord, I love you. I believe in you. I believe Jesus is my Savior. I, I, I repent of my sins. But, you know, don't don't bother me. I, I've I don't, got I don't, other plans. I don't go to church. I don't pay tithes. <laughs> I don't read the Bible. Yeah, I've got you other know, plans. I've got other things to do. But yeah. I want you to bless me once in a while. And so they're, they're going to be down here. Right. You know, they're not getting as many benefits as this person or this person or this person or this person said, right. man, I'm all in. I'm I'm whole hog. I'm I'm going in, you yeah. know, serve the Lord with the whole heart. As we used to say, hook, line, sinker, fishing pole, hat, bag of worms, boots, the whole <laughs> deal. We're going all the way in. Right. Uh, and, and there's going to be more benefits. Exactly. So it's up to you. The hunger. How yeah. much do you want to get involved yeah. and how much do you want God what to bless you? What is your passion and hunger for the things of God? Exactly. But in the Old Testament, it was, uh, uh, you know, we, I know there are a lot of people watching this that, that this is elementary to you, but I know there's a lot of other people that don't even know what Old Testament and New Testament is. So <laughs> so we, we stop and digress once in a while to catch the other people up, not meaning to, you know, bore the people that know what we're talking about. But, you know, God didn't intend there to be an Old Testament. God intended right. for us to live in the Garden of Eden. Yes. Whenever he created us, we've been talking about this now for months. Uh, in Genesis 126, God said, now let us make man. After he's created the earth, the world, the animals, the, 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 the flowers, the trees, this marvelous, wonderful world. Then he says, now let us make man in our likeness, in our image, the image of God, the likeness Hallelujah. of God. You look like God. Thank you, Father. And uh, we're made in his image. Right. And so if you want to know what God looks like, look in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> but he said, now let us make man in our likeness, in our image, and let them, them men and women, them people, let them have dominion. Right. And we've told you over and over and over that that's that's a strong word, dominion. He didn't just say, let them have faith, let them have right. power, let them have authority. He said, mm-hmm. let them dominate. I want them to be the dominating, dominating factor, factor on the planet and to Hallelujah. run things. But he and, That's almost and he said, too strong for some people. <laughs> oh, it is. But it's Bible. It's what it God is. said. It's and amazing. you know, some people just just don't believe what the Bible said. Yeah. Some Christians don't. No, that's true. I've had some preachers argue and say, "Oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that." So what says it right there? Yeah, but I don't believe it. What says it right there? Yeah, but I don't believe it, brother Terry. Well, that's your problem. I, just, I, I believe it. I just it. think it comes from a from a mindset sometimes of laziness. They they just don't want to make the effort. And it, and and I think heaven is always saying. Do your job. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> do your job. Dominate heaven, the earth. That's all they can do. Yeah, right. They're going to be so locked into the word. Right. That they're, I guess people would say they're narrow minded, you know, because <laughs> they're, they're locked into this is what God yeah. said. We only do what God See, right. the Holy Spirit only does the Bible. Right. Yeah, right, right. The Holy Spirit only does the Bible. If you do something outside of the Bible, he's not interested. Right. He, he does the Bible. He's motivated by the Bible, by right. the word of God. But anyway, so God intended, he, he said, now let them have dominion, dominate. Let them have dominion over the, over the fowl of the air, over the fish of the sea, over the beasts of the field, and over all 
the earth. Right. You know, last week I gave a testimony about uh, a horrible earthquake in Guatemala. Right. That happened in 1976. And not me My and another goodness, missionary yes. friend of mine flew down That's there in right. a private plane. And we'd pick up we'd pick up Red Cross uh, medicines and materials and, right. and fly them out to different villages and land and fly back, get more and fly somewhere else. And I mean, it just shaking and quaking. And uh and I walked in, uh, we walked into a missionary's house that we knew, very well-known missionary there, had a bunch of missionaries at his house. They were all scared. And we said, what's wrong with you guys? And they said, well, the, 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 the most famous witch doctor in all of South America, Not Latin mine. America, has said uh, in, within 24 hours there's going to be another, an aftershock that's going to be greater than the first quake mm-hmm. and kill thousands and thousands of people. And, and, if, and he said he's so positive it's going to happen that if it doesn't happen, you can shoot him at dawn tomorrow. And I said, and you're scared. You preachers are scared. You Christians are scared. You missionaries are scared. What's wrong with you? I mean, I just flabbergasted. Oh, and I and I said, I've got more more power in my little finger with the Holy Ghost right. than that stupid witch doctor does with all the power of hell. And I said, so therefore for I sure. decree. As a, I, I know what he said, but here's what I say. And I'm a man of God. And I said, I speak in the name of Jesus and in the, in the office of apostle God's called me to. There will not be another aftershock, another quake, another. No, it's done. It's over. Right. Nobody's going to die. And I said, and I hope they do shoot him. And so and it didn't it didn't happen. I mean, there wasn't another aftershock. There wasn't another nothing. Because well, why? Because of that scripture. That's I didn't right. just make that up. I went back in my spirit when they said that I went back to well, God said have that I have dominion over the whole earth. That we we have a dominion in in the earth, right. and so uh, and, well, and I happened to be yeah. in Guatemala City that day, yes. so that affected me. I had spiritual authority because I'm there. I wasn't in Texas saying, "Oh Lord, bless Guatemala City." I mean, I was in Guatemala City, <laughs> right? And so, uh, uh, so God intended that all to take place, the authority, the dominion that He gave us in Genesis one, uh, and then put us in the garden. He put Adam and Eve in the garden. And intended for us all to be there forever. Right. And he told Adam and Eve, he said, now I want you to have babies here. He said, multiply and be fruitful. Give me a family. I want a family. And he said, now I'll come down. He said, listen, kids, I'm going to come down every day. <laughs> Eve, honey, I'm going to come down every day. Adam, Hallelujah. buddy, hey, I'm going to come down what every day in the cool of what the day. Lie. And I'm going to take you by the hand and you by the hand. And we're just going to tiptoe through the tulips with me oh. in the Shekinah glory of me and just enjoy all this stuff. And I'm going to do it wow. every day. Well, and then I'm gonna do it the next day, and then I'm gonna do it the next day, and then I'm gonna do it every day, every day, every day, every day. And uh, finally, we'd have gotten there. You'd have been there, and I'd have been there. Finally, <laughs> we'd have got there. But wow. Adam what messed that up. He committed treason, high treason, and he sold title deed to this whole shooting match over to the devil, to where the Bible says the devil, then Satan, right. became the god of this world. Now, don't don't be confused with that. He's not the god of the earth. God owns the earth. But Satan's the god of the minds of men. He's the god of the world system. That's where all this sin and garbage and junk came from. So the curse came. Right. When the curse came, the, the, the fall came, the curse came, then sickness came, disease came, murder came, rape came, all this garbage. Uh child molestations and pedophilia, which our Hollywood's trying to sell us wholesale now that it's okay. Uh, it's not okay. It's demonic and devilish. And, and That's right. Uh, anyway, so so that was God's plan for us to live in the garden. But when Adam messed up like he did when he sinned, right. that's the story of the fall of man, Renee. That, right. That's the whole crux of the that's matter. Right that's there. the fall of man. We have the creation of man, right. and then we go from the creation of man, we go to the fall of man. Right. Okay. And then when we go from the fall of man, now every man's doomed. Every man's gonna, destiny is hell. So God said, I got to fix that. So I'll send Jesus. I'll send Jesus to fix this, right. to buy them back. Hallelujah. But he said, but in the meantime, before I do that, because things have to happen for me to do that, I will give them the law. Right. I'll give them the Ten Commandments. I'll give them the priesthood. I'll make priests for them. Uh, I'll give them the temple, the synagogue. Uh, I, I, I'll... And so he invented all that stuff for a redemptive factor for man. Right. But it was based on the blood of bulls and goats by blood sacrifice. Right. And so and that so was the old system. That's the old system. That's the old system. And so people sin. They came in once a year to the priest. They they sacrificed a a, a, a bull, a goat, a turtle dove. What depending on what was going on, what they sacrificed, and the priest killed it. The blood ran, and their sins were their sins were. Uh, atoned for for one year 
Right. So in other words, okay, my 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 sins this last year, they're all they're all they're all covered now. Atonement wow. means covered. So they're covered in the blood. Right. And so that happened all through the Old Testament. And, and, and remember, God couldn't live in them. But then when the New Testament came. Hallelujah. And the New Testament means Jesus came <laughs> my, and the my, Holy my. Spirit came. Yes. Now, every prophet that came along in the Old Testament, God poked them and said, hey, <laughs> say he's coming. Say he's coming. he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And so every prophet, every prophet said, "He's That's coming. Right. The Messiah is coming. There'll be a savior. Uh, he'll be born in the city of David. He'll be born in Bethlehem of Judea. He'll be born of a virgin. Uh, the government will rest upon his shoulder. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming." And every prophet said that. Moses prophesied it in Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen. He said, That's "A great right. prophet's uh, coming." Every book. David of the prophesied Old it Testament. in the Psalms and said, "A great every priest book. is coming after the order of Melchizedek." Zechariah prophesied it in Zechariah nine nine. He said, "A great king is coming, and he'll ride into Jerusalem on a donkey." Hallelujah! Uh, and so they <laughs> prophesied: the prophet's coming, the priest is coming, the king is coming. That's Jesus. He's the prophet, the priest, the king. Yes. In those three offices, the prophet, priest, and the king were the only offices ever anointed in the Old Testament. Right. Just those three offices. They would they would take a it's horn amazing. and That's fill it right. up with oil, symbolizing the what Holy Spirit. God's and head. they'd pour it over some guy's head. Yeah. And the oil would run down his hair and his beard and his clothes and on the floor, anointed symbolically of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Not in him, but on him. And then and then uh we're out of time. <laughs> anyway, so when they they would anoint him, and that was the, the only three anointed were the prophet, the priest, and the king. Right. So when Jesus came, he was the prophet, the priest, the king, the anointed one. Hallelujah. And we'll have to finish this next week. Well, you know, it's exciting to know all the great things that God's had planned from the very foundations of the earth. And so we're just here talking about the plan for your life, that's all. And we just want to remind you one more time till next week, you are... More than, than conquerors. conquerors. God bless you. Renee and I just want to remind you that the greatest miracle of all time and the only eternal miracle is salvation. So uh, let's just do that right now. Pray this prayer after me. Father God, I come before you today to accept Jesus. I believe in my heart Jesus is the Son of God. I call on you today according to your word. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and I'll serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you're saved. You're born again. So write us, let us know, tell somebody that you prayed with Terry and Renee and that you gave your heart to Jesus. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for watching today. Renee and I always enjoy ministering to you. And one thing about the word, it works. You know, the COVID thing is about wrapped up, thank God. And uh, different restrictions are lifting around the world. And so uh, we're beginning to move out around the world again, which is what we've done for 54 years. And so uh, we want to invite you to partner with us, to hook up with us, to go around the world with us. You know, in our as far as teaching and training, we train missionaries. Uh, we train pastors. Uh, I've had pastors conferences in country after country after country, which is something God spoke to me to do when I was just a teenager, to train ministers. And so we've done that. But we also have open air crusades and different kind of crusades in different nations uh, with healings and miracles and salvations. So we want to invite you to be partners with us as we have partnered with other ministries all, really all of our lives. And we pray for our partners daily. We'll pray for you daily. So make it a consideration, make it a prayer, see what the Holy Ghost says to you. And uh, we'd be glad to have you partner with us and go around the world with us. God bless you.